Coming up on this edition of Access Virginia Beach. See why these kids and others across the city are taking cover. Plus, find out if these mathematicians set a new world record. And who do you call if your 400 pound crocodile hurts his foot? Find out next. That and more are coming up as we Access Virginia Beach. Hello and welcome to VBTV's Access Virginia Beach, a program that informs you of news and events from around our city and schools. I'm Veronica Coleman. Thanks for joining us. On his way to the theater of Pompeii in 44 BC, Caesar, king of the Roman Empire, saw a seer who foretold that harm would come to him no later than the Ides of March. A warning, as we all know, he paid no attention to. Well, beach schools recently paid attention to and reacted to a warning they received on the Ides of March, a statewide tornado drill. The National Weather Service in Wakefield has issued, this is a test message, tornado warning for all of Virginia. To start the statewide drill on the 15th, the National Weather Service sent a test tornado warning at 9.45 a.m., simulating what listeners will hear during an actual tornado warning. Students and staff at Lansdowne Elementary reacted to the warning and put their emergency plan of action into effect. Our first job is to keep them to safe and sound and certainly the bottom line is is that making sure that we're prepared before an emergency is always a good practice and that's why we do this several times a year but especially today when it's being done all over. But that's the whole point is that we want kids to feel safe and secure in this environment and be prepared in case a natural disaster of some kind did strike. Upper class students exited their classrooms and lined the hallways covering their heads while younger students maintained positions of safety in their classrooms. Even though it doesn't happen very often, it's a possibility and so the children need to be comfortable with the procedures um, and so we do practice it a couple of times a year just in case. Tornadoes in Virginia, like the one that pummeled Suffolk in 2008, have hit in every month of the year and in every part of the state. Everyone needs to know what to do if a tornado warning is issued for our area. Go to the basement or interior portion of the lowest level of your building. Stay away from windows. Enter a small room such as a bathroom or closet. Get as many interior walls between you and the outside of your building. And if you live in a trailer or mobile home, get out and find a sturdy shelter or lie in a ditch or ravine. When it comes to emergency preparation, it's never too early to start planning. In the event of a tornado, hurricane, or other natural disaster, the city of Virginia Beach is ready to respond, and they want to make sure you and your family are also prepared. Access reporter George Chandler brings us the details. When faced with a pending emergency, whether natural or man-made, you will be tackled with many questions. Am I prepared? What do I need to do? Will I have to leave my home? Though Virginia Beach has been battered by Mother Nature a few times in the recent past, Residents have not faced a situation that called for mass evacuations. But what if that were to occur? Would you know what to do? One of your best options may be to take advantage of an emergency shelter. Well, it's a safe place for people to be in a storm and where they may not be safe at home. When warranted by threatening conditions, emergency shelters are opened in coordination with human services, public schools, sheriff's office, and the American Red Cross. A number of schools across the city have been identified as primary and secondary shelters. Because each situation is unique, only certain shelters may be opened at a time. That depends on the, the storm itself and how severe it is. Um, and these are all decisions that are made by the emergency operations and the city planners. Prepare for your shelter stay by packing a few items to help you ride out the storm. Consider a sleeping bag or air mattress with sheets and pillows, a first aid kit, toothbrush and toothpaste, deodorant and other personal items, towels and a washcloth, radio and batteries, medications, three days worth of clothing, a cooler and drinks and snacks, perhaps a deck of cards or books to pass the time. When you arrive at the shelter, sheriff's deputies will wand everybody in order to keep all safe. Keep in mind there are certain items which are absolutely prohibited, like alcohol, drugs and weapons. Other rules are established for your welfare and safety. Smoking inside the shelter is prohibited. Pets are not allowed. No minor children without an adult and children must not be left unattended. 
The shelter is not responsible for lost or stolen articles, so leave your valuables in your vehicle. There are quiet hours and they are enforced. And if you should have a problem or a complaint, see the shelter manager. Well, I hope that they learn that sheltering is a team uh, effort. It's something that we all do together. The staff are there to provide uh, structure and safety, but also it's, it's important to have a good attitude and realize that um, many people are safe staying in their own homes, but if you come to a shelter, it is a safe place. Those staff members are easily identified. They'll be wearing the red and white shelter staff lanyards. Once inside, each person will have to register. Shelter staff will be on hand to guide you through the process, but basically, one registration form can be used for an entire household. If you need an interpreter for hearing or language issues, one will be provided for you. If you or a member of your party should have a health or medical issue, you will be directed to the health services table. Registered nurses will be on hand while shelters are open. The nurses will be able to monitor any health issues, refrigerate medications if needed, and even charge special equipment. If you have particular nutritional needs, bring them up with the nurses. Remember, shelters are only equipped to provide basic first aid. Medical needs that require a higher level of care may be transported elsewhere. Here are your accommodations for the duration of your stay. Certainly not a five-star hotel, but a school gymnasium is a safe spot for you and your family. Pick a spot and keep in mind cots and blankets are not provided until after 72 hours. Quiet hours are enforced and usually begin around 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. Mute electronic games and put cell phones on vibrate or silent modes. And if you are looking to keep up to date, TVs will be set up in the common areas or the cafeteria to keep track of the storm. Meals will be served during your stay, but keep in mind, food selections are at the discretion and availability of the supplies at the school, though every effort will be made to provide nutritious and satisfying meals. Those meal times will be scheduled by the cafeteria manager. Big storms are usually big news, so the media may show up at your shelter. The shelter staff has media representatives who have been trained to respond to reporters. Those reporters are not allowed inside the gym so that the privacy of citizens can be maintained. Now, if a reporter comes to your shelter and you would like to talk to him or her about your experience, let the media representative know and you will be advised when the reporter is available. Shelters exist to provide a safe place for you to reside during a hurricane or other emergency. The staff makes every effort to provide a clean, organized, and safe shelter. Remember to do your part by keeping your area clean, assisting shelter staff if needed, and watching and protecting your children. Still, it's a shelter and doesn't provide all the creature comforts you might want. But take a few precautions and you'll ride out the storm just fine. Think about it ahead of time. Um, listen to the weather reports and try to be as plan as carefully as you can what needs what needs you might have in about a 24 to 36 hour period away from your home. So that's that's what I would suggest to people that they do is just focus on that. And then when you come to the shelter, you have the things you need. Reporting for VBTV, I'm George Chandler. You can always find out more information on emergency shelters and preparedness. Simply log on to vbgov.com slash be prepared. It's not necessarily late-breaking news that a slow economy has affected the city's budget process, as city leaders are currently looking at ways to close gaps in the funding plan. The job has been made easier due to some cost-saving measures put into place by city departments. City manager James Spohr presented the 2010 Striving for Excellence report to City Council this month. The annual report highlights initiatives and practices put into place that ultimately result in significant cost savings, improve services to the community, and strengthen the city financially. In 2010, the combined efforts of departments and teams resulted in nearly 200 quality and productivity initiatives being completed. Those efforts added up to $1,789,151 in direct savings for our customers. There were other financial impacts as well. More than $4 million in costs were avoided. The efforts created almost $1.5 million in new revenue. New grants brought in almost $2 million, and fundraising resulted in another $2 million. Some highlights. 
new park signage, which saves $27,000 in maintenance costs. Using public utilities instead of a private lab to test beach water saved another $26,000. A new contract for multifunction printers could save the city more than $600,000 a year. Even the Virginia Aquarium Foundation got in on the act, raising more than $664,000 last year. City officials claim that these initiatives are part of what makes the city financially sustainable, and there's plenty more where that came from. The entire report can be found online at bbgov.com slash 2010 striving for excellence. For decades, the National Library Service for the Blind has been helping visually impaired individuals enjoy the gift of reading. In fact, the service recently celebrated a milestone, and one local library joined in on the fun. Today is the 80th anniversary of the National Library Service. That's a division of the Library of Congress. And we offer that service right out of the Bayside Special Services Library. To help celebrate the service that keeps people reading, Bayside Library held a special program complete with panel discussions, testimonials, and even a check presentation. The Lions are presenting us a check for $5,500 today. Well, the money was raised in order to purchase blank digital cartridges, um, so the library staff will be able to download books available online to increase the circulation and availability of books um, to the customers. And for many folks that use the Talking Books program, the service is a priceless gift. It really has changed my life, so I don't have to depend on a reader. I don't have to depend on someone to um, read a book to me, and it's free. The Bayside Special Services Library has a huge collection of digital cartridges that include bestsellers, classics, biographies, and even magazines. For more information, call the library at 385-2680. The Virginia Beach Education Foundation raises tens of thousands of dollars a year in contributions that they, in turn, return to the teachers in the, in the division by way of grants. Money is raised through golf tournaments, United Way donations, and the second annual Pearls of Wisdom Oyster Roast. Bring your lawn chair, oyster knives, and appetites to the 24th Street Park on Saturday, April 2nd for this fundraiser to benefit students and teachers. Pearls of Wisdom Oyster Roast, beautiful day. Sunny, outside 24th Street Park to raise money for the Education Foundation. It's all about the kids. And what goes better with steamed oysters than some butter? That's Butter the Boogie Band that will once again be rocking the afternoon. 450 people attended last year's fundraiser, raising $15,000 for the foundation. Last year we started for the first time uh, knowing that we needed to raise more money for teacher grants. Uh, teachers need more money, the school has less to give in discretionary funds, and teachers have great ideas. So when we had it last year, it was a no-brainer. People want to get outside, support the schools at the same time, and uh, people love oyster roasts in Virginia Beach. It's a popular thing. For more information, contact the Education Foundation at vbef.org or call 263-1337. Quick, what, 7 times 3, 38 minus 14, and 64 divided by 8? seemed a little complicated. Well, not for the student at Windsor Woods Elementary. Welcome to World Math Day 2011. Raise your hand if you're ready to get started. Let's make some noise. <laughs> From addition to multiplication. 14 plus 14. Uh, 92 minus 6. 21 plus 9. This group of math whizzes spent the day putting their mental arithmetic skills to the test doing World Math Day. It is an online gaming system that is free to students um, that allows for them to compete against students all across the world um, in 60, minute, 60 second um, mental arithmetic games. Students linked up with others online to compete in 60 second math competitions. More than 225 countries participated in the event all in the hopes of promoting numeracy. We're learning all these math problems and it is kind of fun challenging kids all, all over the world. I do a lot of math and I like to, like, and I like games too. It's like a, it's like doing math questions and a game mix. The entire school participated and once the numbers were tallied, close to 430 million questions were answered correctly worldwide. Coming up next on this edition of Access Virginia Beach, See how this star football player is inspiring middle school students. 
Plus, find out exactly how aquarium staff subdues and treats a 400-pound crocodile. It's not easy. That and more are next. Step back in time to learn the story of determined individuals who wanted more for their children. The Union Kempsville Museum tells the story of the first and only school for African American children in segregated Princess Anne County. Located at the Renaissance Academy in Virginia Beach, the museum contains artifacts from the school's history like old photographs, athletic equipment, and prom queen crowns. Interactive features keep the stories of triumph alive. The school may be closed, but the legacy lives on. Visit the Union Kempsville Museum, a story for all people. Welcome back to Access Virginia Beach. I'm Veronica Coleman. Although the mercury is slowly starting to rise, summer is, is still a long way off, but that doesn't stop the Department of Emergency Medical Services from planning ahead. In fact, the EMS is currently taking applications for summer lifeguards, and if you've ever wondered what lifeguarding is all about, then look no further. Here's Access reporter Peter Van Heest. You know, public beach is, you know, we feel it's really, really important to have life-saving services, especially on the beach, so people feel safe. They can bring their kids down. They know that they're experienced lifeguards um, that watch their kids. From Marketplace all the way down to Little Island Park, there are a total of 11 staff lifeguard stands located on the beaches of Sandbridge. Our lifeguarding hours are from 9.30 to 6 every day, um, from Memorial Day weekend, the Saturday of, till Labor Day weekend, the Monday of. So we're out here from 9.30 to 6. Uh, we have three supervisors that are on the beach. Each lifeguard is tested and trained under strict standards. We have to do several classes concerning ocean rescue and CPR classes, first aid classes, everything that you could possibly think could go wrong on the beach, we have to be prepared. The Department of Emergency Medical Services runs the lifeguard services in Sandbridge and Little Island. And it also manages the lifeguard contract for the resort beaches. There are eight supervisor and 40 lifeguard positions available. Job descriptions and applications can be found in the career section of vbgov.com. The Department of Emergency Medical Services provides more than just lifeguarding services. They operate the nation's largest volunteer rescue system. Access reporter Robert Patterson shows us what it takes to get the job done. When it comes to medical emergencies, the motivated and highly trained volunteer crews of EMS will be at your service. Our system is unique in the way that it is a volunteer system uh, because all the cities surrounding our area are jointly with fire and EMS. EMS in Virginia Beach has remained all volunteer throughout the years. We uh, respond to medical emergencies, traumas. Um, we have uh, one or two crews on day and night, 24, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Virginia Beach is well known for having the largest volunteer rescue squad in the country. All right, I'm going to check his pupils. They're always looking for new volunteers, and it's not as difficult as you might think. It is free for them to come out and take a uh, comprehensive Commonwealth of Virginia EMT program. They learn how to evaluate patients. They learn how to uh, stop bleeding, uh, help do CPR on somebody, uh, manage the patient uh, as far as different wounds and injuries. If the patient is sick, how to take care of them depending on their injury or illness. So uh, do we know if this patient's allergic to anything? Uh, there should be a med bracelet or a med tag somewhere on this patient. And no medical background is needed. After about five months of classes, mock scenarios, and thorough training, volunteers hit the streets learning the ropes from other experienced volunteers. Once they graduate from the program following state testing, uh, then they go out to the field at the rescue squad where they are trainees until released as an attendant in charge. There are 10 volunteer stations located around the city, but they support much more than just ambulances. They also can join our bite team, our marine rescue team, our squad truck team, our search and rescue team, uh, and become involved that way in the community to assist. Whether it's a way to get involved with the community or maybe a chance to break into the medical field, most volunteers find their efforts very rewarding. It makes me feel good that you can give back to people that are in need, that are injured or are truly in an emergency. Um, people who call 911 for various reasons and you're there to help them. And it's definitely neat to see them being appreciative and saying thank you when you take them to the hospital. To qualify, you must have a high school diploma or GED, have a good driver's license, and of course the desire to give back to the community. 
After completion of all required training, EMS volunteers commit to 48 hours a month. All types of people with all kinds of backgrounds and skills make up the volunteer rescue squads of Virginia Beach. If you're interested in volunteering, log on to vbems.com or call 385-2911. Reporting for VBTV, I'm Robert Patterson. The EMS Training Center holds several EMT classes each year. Typically, they are held in the evenings and include a couple of Saturday workshops. Log on to vbems.com for detailed information. Beach schools are looking for a few good men and women to apply for summer school positions. The division is seeking applicants for teacher, teacher assistants, office personnel, custodians, librarians, nurses, and security assistants. Guidelines for applying and a list of frequently asked questions about summer school employment are available online. Log on to vbschools.com slash summer school. Making sure children are influenced by positive role models helps them achieve more in life, which is exactly why one middle school invited an alma mater back to share his motivational story. Sixth grade English students from Bayside Middle School welcomed a popular football player into their classroom. I'm Demetrius Nicholson. I play football at Bayside High School. But Demetrius is not just a star on the football field, but in the classroom as well. The better your grades are, the easier life will be. Like, you don't have to make it harder than it really is. If you got A's and B's, you know, life would be kind of stress-free, you know, kind of living that dream right now. Because of those good grades and talent on the field, Demetrius received 17 scholarships from colleges around the country. He had this message for students. I just wanted to know that in order to do anything, you have to stay focused. You can never get distracted, and you can never let, you know, something bring your emotions down. And as long as you stay positive about yourself and, you know, have a good sense of pride and confidence, you'll be okay. Demetrius and his family have overcome many hardships. His greatest fan is his mother. I am very proud he has come a long way. Um, as a parent, I had him at 12, so we came a long way together. And for him just to overcome the obstacles he's been through and the challenges he's been put through is amazing. It's a true blessing. And after his visit to Bayside Middle, he can add a few more fans to the growing list. It made me feel good because he, he, he's like a role model to me. It makes me try and get good grades too and not uh, get dropped out of school. The visit was a great way to inspire upcoming students. Most of the students at the school don't have a positive adult figure in their life, so I figure what better way than somebody who's actually walked these hallways before and Demetrius or Trey. Would, was a perfect example. Demetrius is an honor student at Bayside High School and he played cornerback for their football team. He has accepted a scholarship at the University of Virginia. Students from Lansdowne Plaza and Kinsville Middle Schools gathered at the Advanced Technology Center recently for a day of career planning. Now these are called hexadecimal colors. 130 eighth grade students involved with the AVID program, which stands for Advancement Via Individual Determination, had the opportunity to experience hands-on activities in one of four career fields. They will be participating in activities such as designing ads, marketing activities, uh, working with robots, uh, hydraulics, pneumatics, building web pages, learning how to work in Photoshop, and much, much more. Career Day is designed to engage students and provide career exposure. And uh, this is a project we're working on. Students even had the opportunity to speak with juniors and seniors about the programs offered at the ATC. What we thought we would do is start at an early age and get kids thinking about career opportunities. So they come to the middle school activity. If they see that this is something they have an interest in, we even have a summer camp for them to participate in. They can come here in high school and take these classes. And then after high school, they can go to college, join the workforce, enter the military, or any combination of the above. Interested in finding out more? Later this month, summer camp registration flyers for the ATC will be distributed to all rising ninth graders in the division. You can also check out advertisements in Apple a Day on bbschools.com and at the ATC website. The camp runs from August 15th through the 19th. Call 648-5800 for more details. When we have a foot ache, we call the doctor. When our dog starts limping, we call the vet. But who do you call when your 400-pound crocodile has an infected toe? So when you lean over, do so slowly, you know, and understand she may jump and twitch or whatever, all the more reason to keep that board down between her face. And the Luckily, the staff at the Virginia Aquarium knew exactly what to do when Gloria, an 11-and-a-half-foot-long Temistema crocodile, hurt her foot. 
We were told several, uh, a couple of months ago that her toenail looked unusual and they're very large. Uh, I mean, uh, somebody even compared them to the size of a shotgun shell. So they're big toenails. And it looked like it was injured. We went and we took a closer look through the glass of the exhibit right behind me. Uh, and it, in fact, looked like her to toenail was broken. So Gloria was moved into the holding area and prepped for her doctor's visit, which involved multiple procedures. We're going to go to any extreme to take care of her. And we saw this as a possibility for something that could evolve into something more serious. And with that in mind, <clears throat> we like to be proactive and try not to be reactive. And we decided we'd go ahead and, and react or be proactive with the situation and remove the toenail. After some antibiotics and much deserved rest and relaxation, Gloria should be back on the exhibit within the next few weeks. Gloria, along with her pal Grover, has been at the Virginia Aquarium for almost two years now. You can visit them in the Malaysian peat swamp exhibit. Log on to virginiaaquarium.com for hours and admission. And with that, we've come to the end of our show. But if you've missed something or would like to see it again, you can view this program online. Log on to vbgov.com slash eStream. Then find and click on Access Virginia Beach. For everyone here at VBTV, I'm Veronica Coleman. Thanks for watching.